Good morning, St. Francis. It is Friday, March the 19th, 2021. Yes, it may be Friday of the fourth week of Lent. Yes, it is the 27th day of Lent. But more importantly, it is the solemnity of St. Joseph, uh, the husband of the Blessed Virgin Mary. So, buona festa, San Giuseppe, everybody. Uh, Today uh, is a day, uh, because it is the, one of the two solemnities within Lent, it's a day in which we break with a regular round of Lenten readings. Uh, the Annunciation next week is the second solemnity that we will also do the same as well as we did at the beginning of Lent with the Feast of the Chair of the Apostle Peter. Um, so today, on this, on this Feast Day of St. Uh, Joseph, uh, we will hear uh, from uh, readings that are other than the Lenten readings. Uh, I was looking around the campus trying to find an image, a statue, a picture, I don't know, of St. Joseph. I don't think we have any. If we do, please let me know. But I couldn't find any. We've got Francis and Claire everywhere. We've got Mary. We've got a Madonna. We've got Magdalene. We've even got Mary and Martha. Uh, so, but we can't find, I don't think we have any picture of St. Joseph. And so I came to Founders uh, Hall, our first church here on the campus, as you can see. There it is, kind of barren, still because of the pandemic. And came upon this picture, which I've always uh, admired in one way. It's one of the few stained glass installations that is colored. Um, and so uh, it's here. It's set in wood. Uh, there is no name, though, attached to it. So um, I don't know who it is. Uh, it could be a man. It could be a woman. Uh, it could be Francis. It could be Claire. But today we're going to say it's Joseph. I don't know, because just because it's nice to have an image. And so it's Joseph right there. Um, and he's between two ficus trees. Uh, so fake ficus trees, by the way. Uh, so we need a picture of St. Joseph, I think. So or an image. Hint. And a statue? I don't know what. Uh, here on this campus. Uh, plus, just to allay all of your fears, yes, there is a canon loophole, canon 12 something or other, that says on a solemnity during Lent, if it falls on a Friday, you can eat meat. So go to town. But remember, Joseph probably would have eaten fish. So, uh, so there you have it. There you have it. Today's, uh, today's readings, again, breaking with the Lenten round, uh, but we have an interesting phenomenon. In the gospel, there's a choice of two. Uh, we can read from Luke, uh, where basically uh, Jesus is lost in the temple, and Mary and Joseph uh, can, can't remember that he's not with them until they're halfway to Nazareth. They go back, they find him, you know, and bring him back home. The other one from Matthew's gospel is where uh, Joseph is upset, frightened, or whoever that Mary is pregnant, not by his means, but by God's, and wants to divorce her quietly because he doesn't want any, 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 any round with all of this mess that he's in. And God tells him to buck up. Um, and eventually Joseph does and, 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 and becomes the figure uh, that, that he needs to be for, Ma for Mary and for Jesus. Between these two mentions of him and just a few others at the beginning of Luke and of Matthew's Gospels, there is nothing more that really is ever said about Joseph. Uh, many times he's even just known as the carpenter, and Jesus is the son of the carpenter or the carpenter's son. Um, he is a man of the shadows, no more, no less. We, we create all kinds of legends, all kinds of things about him because we want him to be great, mighty, and powerful. But the reality is that his greatness, his might, his strength was in the fact that he remained in the shadows and yet did God's will and accomplished what God asked him to do. He passes in and out of history quickly, but he remains always in the shadows. And yet his role in the life of Mary and of Jesus perhaps, you know, was, was, also, was, was incredibly necessary and could have no other comparison. In many ways today, what we are asked to take a look at and to reflect upon is what Lent is really all about. That we don't have to be high and mighty and great. We do not have to be the most pious, the most devoted, the most whatever that, you know, that we make up for ourselves. Again, that we want sometimes even in our leadership, you know, to be this holy of holies to guide us on the pathway to God. No, it is sometimes those who are in the shadows that offer us the best witnesses of what it means to be in a world that can sometimes forget those who lie in the shadows. During the season of Lent, we are asked basically to reclaim the necessity that each of us have to be witnesses in this world, witnesses of God's love and mercy and faithfulness, that we might show love and mercy and faithfulness to each other and bring that kingdom of God alive in this world. Joseph had a role to play and played it. Even though he was reluctant at first, even though he tried to get out of it, he eventually saw the good that could be done even by remaining in the shadows. May all of us emerge from the shadows when it is necessary to give witness to the glory of God and to allow God's reign on earth to be revealed more and more. May the Lord give you peace.